As you're aware, some new leaders have been released for Halo Wars, and you probably want to see what they have to offer, so I'm going to do exactly that. In this video, I'm going to be showing off the Arbiter, his new units, and all of his leader powers. So without any further ado, let's get started. Just like in the first Halo Wars, the Arbiter leader has dual energy swords that do a good amount of damage to ground units, but he can't attack air. He also has the same Y ability as the first game, but the AI controls it rather than you, and he doesn't fly from target to target. He has increased speed and gets a massive damage boost while the ability is active. He can attack air units when it is active as well. His upgrades include the following. Swift Fury, that increases speed, damage, and health, while also making it when you use the Y ability, he gains health. The next upgrade is Conduit Incarnate, which increases his health and damage, and activates Conduit of Rage, which is a leader ability that causes things near the place it was activated to heal and get a boost in speed and damage. The final upgrade is called Arbiter's Reprisal, and it returns some of the damage he gained back to the enemy. All around, he is a very good leader and is incredibly strong. With the new leader come several new units. The first new unit is the classic Phantom. This unit is okay at attacking air but is not very effective against any other type of unit or buildings. Its main purpose is to transport infantry around the map quickly. It is unlockable out of the third tier of your leader powers and you build it in your main base. It starts out being able to only transport two squads, but can be upgraded to three. This unit can be used in a variety of situations, such as capturing or defending points, saving your leader, or just a surprise attack. The next new unit is called the Elite Enforcer, and it replaces your jump pack brutes in the raid camp. This unit is anti-building and is equipped with plasma casters. They are also given a stasis grenade as their Y ability, which stuns other infantry and stops them from being able to attack you for a moment. The last unit is a modification to the Grunt Squad, and it allows you to increase the squad's size and turn invisible after you've upgraded it. This is useful if you want to attack early. So now I'm going to go over the leader powers for the Arbiter. The first one he has is Teleport, which allows you to teleport your army from one point to another within a specified range. The second one is the Stasis Mine, which when an enemy walks into it, they are not able to move or shoot for a period. The third one is Conduit of Rage, which is a passive power and it heals friendly buildings and units and boosts speed and damage for a time whenever a leader power is used. The fourth is Plasma Bolt, which allows you to fire up to three independent shots wherever you want. The fifth one allows you to build phantoms. The sixth one is Elite Spirit Assault, and it allows you to drop down four veteran elite enforcers wherever you would like. The seventh one is Stasis, and it creates a little stasis field that stops any units or buildings inside from working, taking damage, or shooting. This will also make friendly units ignore enemy units, and enemy units also ignore your units that are inside of the stasis. The eighth one is a passive called Power Surge, and it reduces leader power cooldowns. The ninth one is Mass Stasis, and this is a much larger version of Stasis. The last one is Mass Cloaking, and this turns all of your units invisible, while they gain a speed boost and a small siphon. Thanks guys for watching, hope you enjoyed, have fun with the leader, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.